so this is actually the second time that I am recording this video because I did not really like my product for this one for the video I actually like the first one that I did better so I am going to record the entire thing again a little bit differently I am going to record the drawing part in time-lapse so it's gonna go super fast don't freak out because um, I'm gonna walk you through the drawing anyways in class um, you will see that what I'm starting with um, I'm kind of just referring to some pictures and I'm going to start by drawing finding kind of the shapes inside the figure that I'm drawing. So I'm starting with some circles. You'll see me do that. Um, and then you'll kind of see me round it out. The key thing is remember to use sketch lines. Um, really, really light lines here all the way through. Okay, so hold on tight, here we go. Okay, so this is going to be good enough um, for now just to get me started um, with the painting part. You can see that I kept on kind of filling the shape out um, as I went. Um, let me see, quails are quite stout birds. They don't fly a whole lot. Okay, so I just kind of kept on rounding them out. Now, again, yours might be stouter, yours might be thinner too. They're different shapes kind of depending on how they're Kind of sitting up too so I wouldn't worry too much about that I do want to mark off the spot that I want white okay so I'm just going to outline that um, and we're going to share a couple fine line sharpies okay so it's extra fine I think okay just ahead of time because I don't want I don't want to paint inside of those everything else I am NOT going to actually draw any lines that was one thing I didn't like my oil pastel lines there um, and these lines for um, the first one that I did I actually put that in after the fact after I painted so I'm gonna go ahead and start painting now um, I'm noticing too I probably will kind of paint that a little bit thicker as I go but we shall see so before I again throw this into hyperspeed um, we're using our smaller water brushes this time loaded up with water um, new paints um, what I want you to do in painting though is to try to mimic with your brush strokes the natural kind of direction and shape of the feathers you want to create that there um, you also really really want to try to leave you can see they've got kind of these distinctive markings and there's these white markings. Leave space in your painting. Um, try really, really hard not to paint the entire thing. So again, you're just going to brush little, little strokes, okay? So, um, for some reason too, I like my colors better here than I did here. Um, I don't know if I just like the cool colors better or what but you can see you have quite an array of colors here okay tons of colors um, these are brand new I got these specifically because of the range of colors so um, you can kind of experiment um, if you're not quite sure what co color it is feel free to use that palette we are going to be sharing these so um, reminder it doesn't it takes very little water um, you guys know how to re remember how to use these but again so we're just kind of filling in last time we did watercolors we used wet on wet technique this time we're just going to do um, paint it on dry okay and use it a little bit more that way okay so again um, pay attention make sure that your brush is mimicking um, the look of the feathers down here you're going to see me create little U shapes um, and then I'm going to go back in after it dries and kind of create this darker spot here okay so here we go again hold on tight
Okay, so as I am kind of trying to find a good stopping point, the thing to remember, especially, is you can always add more, um, but it's extremely hard to take any away. So kind of, you're going to always remember to kind of take a step back, take a look at the picture of the quail, take a look at what you're creating, um, kind of see where you want to add more, um, but don't feel like you have to. Okay, so really, truly with um, watercolor, less is more. It will dry a little bit paler than um, what you're seeing, but um, not by much. These watercolors are pretty um, bright and vivid, which is another reason why I got newer ones. Um, you'll also see as I'm kind of painting, I'm changing the shape a little bit. Um, you saw that I went over my pencil line. My pencil line is kind of, I think, way back there. I kind of wanted to make him bigger, so I just kind of um, just made him bigger. <laughs> so keep on going. Um, I'm going to finish him up. But again, less is more. Make sure, leave negative space. Negative space in watercolor. So negative meaning what's not there. Negative space in watercolor is actually a really, really beautiful thing. Um, and it's just something special about using watercolors. So I'm going to call this guy about done. Um, the only thing I'm going to use, let me see, I'm just going to finish up the legs a little bit. Um, just a little bit of um, black. Um, quails have that one toe that kind of goes back and three toes that go forward. So again, I'm just kind of drawing with paint at this point. Okay, I kind of drew a line with the water. And I'm just kind of filling it in with paint a little bit, okay? Um, I think that's going to about do it. You might have seen, I tried to use the um, a little bit of the white just to kind of see what it would look like. Um, it doesn't, it's not the same as leaving negative space. It really isn't. Um, it makes the paint slightly, it just kind of changes the tone a little bit. Um, but it's not, it's really not the same as not painting at all. So, good luck and do your best. Have fun. And please, please, please try to keep your paints clean, nice and neat, brand new. Thank you.